Hello and welcome back to my job tutorial series. As you can see the code from last episode where we went over target data lines in the Java Sound API and you know importing audio from a microphone and everything. And in this episode, that is not the button I wanted to press. Anyways, in this episode we'll be continuing our Java Sound API tutorials and we'll go on to the um third and final line you can get via the audio system, which is the source data line. So this is episode, I spelled it right this time, it's episode 23 and that seems like a nice set of settings. So um, a source, we already went over another form of sound output which was clips, not eclipse but just a clip object and what the clip did is that it loaded the entire audio bit into memory before you could play it. But with source data line with source data lines, you can um, play back audio that um, you uh, you don't have to load all of it into memory at once. Or if you don't know all of it yet, you can just like continually um, write to it. So as always, we're going to start with our main class, followed by our main method after it's made. So as with the rest of the uh, Java Sound tutorials that we've done, um, getting um, lines from the audio system is, you know, fairly should be fairly familiar by now. Yeah, that looks about right. So uh, we're gonna start with try, since we never know what kind of errors we'll get, except we know exactly what type of errors we'll get. I won't even put it in a try yet. I totally know what I'm doing, by the way. So we're going to make an audio format. So I don't think we made an audio format for the clip tutorial, since clips automatically read the audio format from the file. But since we're dealing with uh, something we know a lot less about, we have to um, give it a uh, format. What am I doing? I, why, oh god. I just got really confuzzled. We're making audio formats. If that's not right. It's pretty close, but not right. So this is going to be the exact same format we made in the last episode. So we'll do the which is basically a wave format. So we'll do PCM signed. Uh, sample rate of 44,100, 16 bits per frame, uh, 2 for stereo, that's how many channels, 4 bytes per whatever, and this is like something else, and then it is little endian and not big endian. Uh, what's, okay, I don't care about you. Now we can actually get some data lines. So data line, I mean, well, data line info is pretty much the same thing. I'm going to say new data line dot info. And of course, we're going to give it the class argument of what we want. And we want a source data line dot class. And we'll just give it our format right now, as opposed to later. And we'll do, oh, well, excuse me. We'll do, we're doing this, we're making this final because what we're going to do, we're going to put this object in a anonymous inner thread class so we can do better because this Java Sound API really only works if you use it with multiple threads. And in order to use objects in um, anonymous inner classes, they have to be final. But that's perfectly fine since we're never going to uh, reconstruct this again. So we're going to say source, if I can, you know, spell as always <laughs> audio system get line from info this might be throwing an exception line unavailable exception so now we can break out those age-old try blocks And for the sake of convenience and monotony, we'll just print the stack. Trace. And then we'll just do source line dot open. Open for every other, you know, 
data lines we've been dealing with concerning the sound API. It just grabs all the system resources it needs or that it will need in order to, you know, conduct its audio I.O. and such. So now we're actually going to make a thread. And it's all going to call this the source thread. Of course, it's going to be a new thread, except it's going to be anonymous inner class. So in here, we can just type the class. And we're going to override the one method that you would want to override for threads, which is run, which is exactly what it'll do when you call that method. So in here, we'll just say source line dot start. Now you call start after you open, and start means it'll automatically start playing whatever is in its buffer. And right now there's nothing in its buffer for long. So we can say while true, since we're just going to end this when the program ends. The one method that you'll be certainly be using with your source line is write. It only has one write method. And what you do, you give it a array of bytes you give it an offset which is normally zero and you give it the length of what you're writing so this isn't very um, uh, useful on its own because obviously you need the sound that you want to output now you could use something you could use, um, use the same method we use for clips is that you could just um, try to uh, import a uh, byte array from a sound file and just put that byte array as the argument for there and just put the byte array dot length next to it and I'll write it all into it and um, play it of course because it automatically plays whatever it's in its buffer but would be more um, useful is that if we just played back something we uh, read from a target data line so we're gonna copy all of this except we don't need this and we're just going to do basically the exact same thing we did yesterday. I mean, not yesterday, the last episode. And make another target data line. Except, you know, this is going to be a target data line. What did I just do? Oh. <laughs> target data line. There we go. And then, do I need to import target data line, I assume? Yeah, my computer is just running the slightest bit slow and I have no idea. But anyway, now we have that target data line and we're in fact gonna make another thread as well. And this will be our target thread. Now what we're gonna do is um, actually yeah, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna um, the whole point about what we're gonna be doing just to test this is that the target thread is going to start inputting stuff from the microphone and then we'll wait a bit, stop recording the microphone, and then play back whatever it was via the source um, data line. So in order to do this, we're going to need uh, just another variable. And this will be a byte array output stream. And this is basically a real convenient... Um, a convenient object for handling byte arrays because it provides several convenience methods has an adjustable it doesn't have a um, fixed length so it has an adjustable buffer so you don't unlike you know actual byte arrays where you have to uh, set their length once and you can't go out of that this one adjusts it so it can you know fit everything inside so in this this is obviously our target thread so we're going to change it to target line dot start and it'll start um, filling its buffer with the audio from the microphone. But in here, instead, we will do uh, byte array data. We'll do byte array. We'll do target line dot get buffer size, and we'll divide it by five because we don't we optimally want to get you know small segments at a time are useful because that means it'll be more efficient and there are some other reasons but I digress uh, so we're gonna change this to red bytes and we're gonna do is say red bytes equals target line dot read 
And now this is also another way, like in the last episode, we used several high-level convenience methods from the audio system in order to get data from the uh, buffer, from the target line buffer, and save it to a file. And this is a lot about, you know, what's going on, you know, arduously behind the scenes and everything. So we're going to read, which means we're going to deposit it into the data buffer. We're going to have an offset of zero and a length of the length of the buffer it's writing to. Now what this returns is the number of bytes it actually put into the buffer. So now we can use this to say out and we'll write to the uh, our convenience um, uh, byte array output stream and we'll just do the full on method. We're going to write data offset of zero and a length of red bytes or the amount of bytes we actually did read from that. So now we have a thread that's continually taking um, byte um, data from the microphone input and writing it to a object we have which is this out array. So now we can use it along with the source data line and we can actually write to it. So let's do out dot to byte array offset is zero and we'll do out dot to byte array dot length or you can also do size so if we just uh, then we can actually put some you know thread activation and other stuff down here so we'll do target thread dot start and then we'll do thread dot sleep let's say five seconds and let's catch of course an interrupted exception yep and then we'll just take the uh, target line and we are going to stop it and then you're gonna close it because you stop and then you close and then we'll do source thread dot start wait another five seconds and then we can close down the source line and then our program will promptly shut down and exit but as always, whenever you're doing dealing with streams or I.O. or any stuff like that, you always have to remember if you open something, you definitely want to close it so it can relinquish all of its system resources. So now we're going to start this up. And I should have put some debug stuff on here, but I didn't. Or there can also be an exception. Target data line. What did I mess up this time? Oh, I know what I messed up. I should probably say target data line and let's do some system dot out dot print line started recording ended recording starting playback and now it should all be hunky-dory so now it's starting recording it'll do that for five seconds and it'll just basically echo everything I said yeah pretty simple that might have been quiet uh, I hope you heard it I don't know let me see good test. In fact, we can just extend this to 10 seconds. Make sure everything's working. So now it'll record for a long 10 seconds, and then it'll just echo everything back. And of course you can do other things with the buffers. So now it'll record for a long 10 seconds, and then it'll just echo everything back. And of course you can do other things with the buffers. Yeah, and what I mean by that is, you know, what is this, what this is giving you inside this out whenever you do out 
uh, to byte array is that it's giving you a whole byte array just filled with all this raw audio data and you can use that up for other things I mean this could be another way you know writing to a file but you can also have um, get audio file streams like what we did for the uh, dealing with clips audio clips is that you know you can use the same method for getting the file and the data from the file but instead of giving it to a clip you can just have an iterative um, stream that just gets short pieces of data at a time and writes them to a source line so if you have an extremely long audio file clips have to load all of the audio file audio file into system memory before it can play it which can take a while if it's you know a long thing but with this if you just have you know an audio stream that only reads a little part of the file at once then um, you can just put it to a source data line that means it'll take up a lot less um, system memory and resources and you can just play it a little bit at a time which will be a lot more friendly to the end user and you and that's it for this episode this has been you know basic using source data lines also how to get the raw data from the microphone instead of just saving it to a file and you can um, use source li source data lines which are really useful next episode we'll be dealing you know still with the java sound api very expansive very useful but we're worried about we'll be um, going on about how to control the sound output you know the um, volume or reverberation or echo and several other features that are primarily included in the Java Sound API. So this has been Boralaborn, and uh, see you next time.